Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Nuston Farm, where, um, very quickly out of character, I want to apologize for yesterday's video and tomorrow's video, the sound quality isn't great. Um, I made a, I'm gonna say a small mistake, I, I did a do, I did a silly. Um, because I record my audio on Audacity, I kind of forget that it just picks up whatever is the newest sound source that's available and sets that as default. The same with my, with Windows itself. And um, what happened was I'd completely forgotten that. I'd completely forgotten my new webcam actually has a microphone in it. And um, my PC, everything about it decided the webcam was now the audio source. Or the, the microphone. Which might have affected the weekend's videos as well. I'm not sure how it works with OBS. But it definitely does that in Audacity. Now, in character, you can see we are moving the uh, new blades in the JCB skid steer. We're just going to drop this off up here very quickly. And we're just going to pull in here, actually. And leave the blades down onto the ground. I don't have my joystick set up, so it's a bit wonky with the mouse. And what we're going to do is we're going to run up to the shed over here where I have the combine because today we got a field canola to harvest and hopefully I can get this done in a couple of hours uh, obviously you'll just have the half hour now and fingers crossed I'll do another half hour which will actually take me about two later on um, I am recording this yesterday <laughs> um, I don't know why but everything just completely stopped there for a moment um, I'm recording this yesterday because my time management has been atrocious um, this year so far. Now what I have done is I've moved uh, all of the new equipment. Uh, the Profi Hopper... <laughs> Profi out of character. This is all out of character at the moment. The Profi Hopper, uh, when I bought it in the, at the end of the Christmas episode, I actually forgot to save the, the, uh, the game. So the Profi Hopper doesn't technically exist right now. Um, everything else I bought is there, the including the um, the power washer. Uh, but the Profi Hopper, um, I, I goofed up, and it doesn't technically exist at the moment. In fact, I'm going to rebuy it right now. So bear with me a moment. It's in mowers. Profi Hopper buy. Okay, and we're good. So now now we're back up to realism. <laughs> we're, we're back up to the uh, real timeline. Now, what I'm going to do is, before I start harvesting, I'm going to get in contact with the bank and tell them to take out as much of the loan as they can. That's 40000 we've just paid off right there of the loan, which is good. And we are going to harvest this field, if I can get into it properly. There we go. Now, this... Harvester doesn't have the greatest steering lock, so some of these turns can can and will be a bit wonky, I would think. I've just realized it also doesn't have mirrors, which is going to make things a bit more interesting. Now, the soil moisture has dipped a bit since uh, the Christmas video. That's good, because... Okay, soil mod at, at noon every day, if it's over 20 degrees, it will recalculate the soil moisture, so it, it drops the soil moisture one level. That's actually good because we're going to get a slightly higher yield now with uh, the lowered soil moisture. It's still not ideal. Uh, the nutrient levels, again, are not ideal. But they're about as good as we can get. Now, of course, canola just doesn't have good yield anyway, so... Um, most of this is going to be driving around the harvester, which is possibly a good thing. Canola does, of, of course, have good uh, cash money in the crop, so... I'm going to be pleased. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually... S Ooh, I was going to... Just realised paying off the loan might have been a mistake. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to... I'm trying to think here, what do I want to do? 
because I want to get another field, I know what field I want, uh, and I know how much it costs, roughly. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, once the canola harvest is done, I'm actually going to sell off the beets, um, because there's more than enough beets, and I'm going to seed the field that I buy into the soil mods, um, I think it's called dry grass. Uh, what that does is it just plants grass and does not put down the grass texture, which is good, which means it's it's a bit easier to work with um, in the long term when you want rid of the mod grass. Because we're, we're only working with the, the compost as as a way of, of keeping the farm going, essentially. Um, once we can get into the likes of biogas, which we will need to get a forage harvester for, and I've been looking for one that's, that's trailed it. Out of character, because this is going to be one of those videos where I'm kind of jumping in and out of character so much. Out of character, why are there so few trailed forage harvesters? They're all for corn. I want one that, um, like the JF um, that NA Modding came out with in 2013. I want one like that where you can pick up grass windrow, but that doesn't seem to be a thing. I may have to uh, do a rare case of I'm going to make a mod and uh, try and splice some mods together so that I can have one. Um, and I'll show you how to do it. David Oldfield's done uh, does similar things on his channel. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to do it, <laughs> first of all. And then I'm going to show you guys how it, how you can do it. So if you want my aberration of a mod that I will most likely create, if, um, I'm going to leave it another couple of weeks at this point. And if I don't see a mod that suits what I want, and I know they're, they're out there somewhere, but if I don't see a mod that suits what I want, I'm just going to make one for myself. Um, I'm going to take a good mod and one of the in-game headers, uh, most likely from the Big X, the Big X um, grass pickup, and I'm going to make it so that it can only pick up windrows. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to have to research how on earth I'm going to do that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And that's see. This is this is modding in a nutshell. Is just you, or mod editing, I guess. Is you pick something that you want but doesn't exist, and you just make it from existing items, which is why I have my own custom Nuston here in uh, Mulroy Bay. When I was doing that, that was customized as well. Uh, the big farm, I will not edit. <laughs> I solemnly swear I will not edit the big farm. Um, any time I would have spent editing that, I'm actually going to spend building, Mul uh, not Mulroy, building Donesk, which is going to mean Donesk will be done slightly quicker. Now there are a few mods that I do want to edit um, over time, and they may or may not get done. Do I want to do a second headland? It's it's probably best for the. Uh, Combine if I do actually. Because my thoughts there was I can do a second headland where I can just go straight up the middle and start working like that, but uh, with the combine almost full, it's going to be a lot easier to unload and more, just as importantly turn the combine around at the end of the field if I put in a second headland. Um, and I know this is the done thing, is you go around the field two to three times, um, in extreme cases four, and you, you get your headlands done. Did I actually miss a spot up there? I did not. So I'm just going to open out the pipe. I don't know why I decided to use keyboard for that. And I'm just going to very quickly uh, tab into the new Holland here, shift it into first gear, inside, and away we go. Now I could use auto combine to do this. I really could. Um, the issue is I don't trust auto combine, especially not with a mod. 
Uh, if I was using one of the in-game harvesters, which, by the way, I will probably upgrade to an in-game harvester in the next... Uh, well, upgrade cycle, I guess. Because we're more or less where we want to be in terms of equipment. I mean, if I look at the garage here very quickly, uh, we got a front loader for the, the Deutz, a bale spike that I can, if I get a second front loader for New Holland, we can use that. We got a plow, we've got decent, well, reasonable sized tether, we don't use that much. We've got a good wind roar. A pellet spreader that we'll pretty much use exclusively for lime and uh, dry sediments. Um, a good set of moors. Some conveyors so that we can move stuff a bit quicker. Good bale trailer, good trailer. Decent combine. A good cultivator as well. So the next thing to upgrade really, unless I already... Oh, I already did. Good cedar. So we're all upgraded then. Uh which is good news. Bad news is I don't know how, where half the equipment is, I'm going to have to find it. Um, so we've... We're pretty much where we want to be right now. We've got equipment that suits the size of the farm. And I'm going to try and keep to the 6 meter limit. Now if in time we end up owning all of the fields, I may end up getting a... Um, a much larger cedar like the uh, Amazon Cayena no, that's a 6 meter one the Amazon Condor is the 15 meter cedar uh, I may eventually upgrade to one of those uh, but that is just in the off chance we do end up owning all the fields I've got a number I've got an amount of money in my head after all the loans and stuff are gone and uh, that's going to be the end point for this series. And let's just say the number I have in my head after all the loans and stuff are gone has seven digits. So we could, in theory, just keep going until we own all the fields here. Or we could wait until we get the number that I've got in my head. I'm going to say the number. It's going to be uh, two and a half million. Either two or two and a half million. It really depends on uh, how much of a struggle it is to get up there. And, of course, we could say, oh, well, why not pay off the loan, buy all the fields, and then go for two and a half million? That's a secondary option, and I'm very much open to that. Um, whatever you guys think would please uh, Charles a bit more. <laughs> two, two, uh, two to two and a half million with not all the fields but no debt, or two to two and a half million with all of the fields and no debt. And there will come a time where I just, you know, if we're going for not all the fields, there will come a time when I say, well, we've got enough fields now, we can make the money in three harvests, and that's going to be us done. The important thing now, and this really is um, the important thing is, is that um, we need to try and break even over the ne this harvest and the next one. Um... Because these are our two free harvests, essentially. After the third harvest, uh, we're going to have to have no loan. So we are essentially going to be trying to make as much money as possible out of these harvests, which is why I'm growing canola, why I'm going for... L I'm not going to say low-yield, high-income, because uh, beet is high-yield and as a result of the yield high income. Um, you know, I'm going for income over um, usability and I'm kind of tempted to go with um, wheat and barley in this cycle, this next cycle. Uh, just because I think I can throw straw into the compost master. And if I can throw straw into the compost master that means we'll be getting the grass off the three meadows as well as the straw off the two fields, and in an ideal world, straw off the field that I, or not straw, grass off the field that I'm planning to buy as well. Now I'm gonna plant it up in grass because I do want a bit more grass than I've been getting, and 
it kind of makes sense to me to uh, to plant up a field in grass so that I just get a bit of a bonus and uh, I'd, I'd just kind of prefer using fields because the uh, so all that stuff shows up a bit easier. Um, now of course the next thing we're going to want to start getting into is going to be animals. Now we already have some sheep and I need to get the profi hopper um, mowing some grass so we're going to take care of the verge of the profi hopper and we're going to use the verge grass to feed the sheep because that makes sense to me. Uh, once we get cows in we will have to use the meadows for cow fodder which means we'll be doing uh, grass silage. Uh, we will actually kind of need a forage harvester when we do cows. Uh, and I'll have to try and work out how to cosplay that nonsense, which is going to be fun. Um, we will need a grass... We will need a forage harvester for the cows because they need silage and I don't trust the... Uh, Farzillo extension to actually work with grass. <laughs> I haven't seen it work with grass ever. Um, if memory serves, it just turns like straight grass into hay. Which is awesome if you want a relatively easy way of making hay. Not so awesome if you want silage. Um, so I'll be looking into that. And now, of course, I could just make silage bales, which is the alternate option there. And here, here's the point now where I have to make the decision. Do I want to do a third headland, or do I want to just shoot up the middle of the field? And I th think I'm going to just shoot up the middle of the field. Yeah, so let's, let's raise the header here. And this is roughly the middle. Let's get... Our GPS module working because I have installed a GPS module on this. Uh, do the offset, do that, and we're stuck in reverse. Well done, me. I completely forgot reverse was a thing. <sighs> so we're off and under GPS. So in theory, and I'm just going to hit control. Yes, we are running under GPS, that is good. In theory now, we can just run this one line under GPS. And hopefully... <laughs> hopefully we won't fill up the harvester coming up to the top. Because I kind of want to have... Oh god, we're going to fill it up before we get to the top, aren't we? Uh, I want to have a way to unload the harvester, and I don't want to try and reverse down the length of the entire we're going to fill up before we get to the top and have to reverse down the entire blooming field. <sighs> Precisely what I didn't want happening. Well, let's go. Now, I don't know if in reality this is what people would do, but this is what makes sense to me in terms of preserving the crop, because the alternate option is to just drive the tractor straight up the middle of the field. Straight up through the crops, which, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, the joy here, and I've just realized it, is I've got chopped maize, or chopped canola there, and I'm going to have to look to my... Uh, book of various items to see what benefits the canola will give to the crop. So, as you might be able to tell, I have been doing some practicing reversing. Meaning I'm spending less time... I said sometime, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have kind of got the the hang of reversing uh, now, which is good. There we go. 
So, that's gonna unload again. Uh, we pretty much at this point just have to wait for it to unload. Uh, what's been going on? <laughs> I've been trying to keep up with news and stuff, but I've, I've been failing spectacularly. Uh, I did mention that I think cattle and crops is pretty much a hoax at this stage. Uh, I'm 90% sure now that cattle and crops unfortunately is a hoax. Which is a real shame because that get, did look like a promising game. Um, in terms of the channel, I want to get a second full time game on the channel, possibly to uh, replace Big Farm when that series is done. So, this will be the only Farm Sim series, uh, as well as the Donetsk series. But I, I don't know what game I want to do. Now, I could do Just Cause 3, but the issue there is um, I'd ra I want to try and keep the channel PG, or at least um, PG-13, and Just Cause is, is, the way I play it, is quite violent. Um, now, I'm not, say I'm not saying violent games are a bad thing, I absolutely love violent games, uh, but... I prefer to keep the, the channel a bit more family friendly than, um, <laughs> you know, random violent attacks on military bases. Rather keep the channel a bit more family friendly than that. So I'm kind of thinking maybe Euro Truck for the time being um, to kind of pass time until, until ATS releases, which. Apparently it's February 3rd, and uh, then swap over into America. Issue is I don't have all the Euro Truck uh, or the ETS2 DLC, which means I don't have. Um, I think it's just Scandinavia's DLC that I don't have, and I don't really want to get the Scandinavia DLC because I kind of sort of think it's a bit overpriced. Especially seeing as I won't be on, you know, if I do a Euro Truck Sim series, it'll be like four or five episodes, and then into ATS. Um, but I do want to, I'm, I'm considering bringing American Truck Simulator onto the channel, because I like trucks, and I like simulators, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, the channel wouldn't be full of simulators. Um, I did do Kerbal Space Program in the past, and between me being completely inept at the game and swapping up the format of the series about six times in 12 episodes and just uh, imp just lack of uh, interest that got shelved pretty quickly and I don't mind that um, you know I'm, I'm trying to think of games that I have that I could play on the channel and there's not too many that I think are very good for videos um, you know, just cause is great. But <sighs> Unless I, you know, I'd have to start a new game, and I literally finished the game last week. And oh my god, the ending is such a letdown. <laughs> oh my god, the the ending of just cause is such a letdown. Or just cause three. Um, And the worst thing is my favorite games are actually Saints Row. Um, I really enjoyed Saints Row 2 and 3, despite the fact they were getting a bit silly, but that's kind of half the fun. Um, I don't know. I may even throw Total War game in, despite the fact that's even less family friendly than um, Just Cause, but it's... It's historical reenactments. Also known as me massacring everyone because they tried to revolt. Don't tell me that's how you that's not how you play Total War games. If a city revolts, it has to die. <laughs> I, I am a merciful leader, I swear. Um, but yeah, this harvest is gonna take a while. Uh, this isn't the widest harvester in the world, and it, 
I think the capacity is actually about right for the size of the harvester, believe it or not. Uh, and the the age of it, because this is a class dominator 108, I believe. It is modeled on. And, uh, yeah, about 4,000 liters in the tank makes sense to me. Now, the turning circle isn't great, but that's kind of beside the point. And it will actually get a bit easier to turn once we open up this central channel a bit more. The big issue at the moment is the central channel just isn't wide enough to allow for easy turning. But hopefully, Thursday's video will be the last in this harvest. Um, hopefully. <laughs> Because what I want to do on Thursday is obviously finish up the canola harvest, and if I do finish it in time, I will start. <coughs> I will start work with the profi hopper on camera. Um, that's gonna be kind of relegated to off camera work though, because the profi hopper work is kind of slow and laborious and dull. It's just me driving around trying to find find grass to cut, and uh, so I'm not gonna interfere with that spectacularly. I think. There's the fun of soil map. But, uh... Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be driving along the verges, cutting it with the profi hopper. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna cut just another headland at the... both ends of the field. I think the sides are fine, because I'm not going down the sides. I'm just gonna cut another headland uh, at both ends. Just to make it that small little bit easier to turn around at the end. Because right now, that new home, wherever I end up parking it, it is in the way. So I just grab a head on there. Lift up the header. I do want to check that I didn't miss any canola, because the yield is so low that any missed spots are big issues. Uh, do I want to just go straight up now? Or I'm gonna get this headland over here as well. Because why not? Plus now that if I need to unload the combine, I think I missed a bit there. Now if I need to unload the combine, it actually is a bit easier. Because... The pipe is sticking out. Uh, the pipe is sticking out towards the bit that's already been harvested. That's not gonna be an issue. I have this headlight cut before. Uh, the tank is full. As I'm driving back, I'll be checking that I haven't missed a bit, which is important. Like I said, canola yield is so low that I don't want to miss... Well, I want to miss as little as I possibly can. I'm not going to say I want to be perfect, but I want to be as perfect as I can be, and that's gone well. I did miss a couple of stocks here by the looks of it. But it is just nick that. And we're all good there. So let's go back up the field now. And you can see that the central channel is just opening up really nicely and uh, chop straw is doing its job fairly well I must admit so let's see we're 80% and we're almost done with this episode I've just checked the time on I've just checked my time so that's good uh, hopefully we won't get the trailer full today which is I'm gonna say acceptable <laughs> Well, we are going to finish um, filling the tank once more, and we'll empty it into the trailer once again. And after that, I'll be calling an episode and uh, leaving you guys trying to find something to do for the rest of the day. And I know you, you'll probably just go watch all the other Farm Sim YouTubers, most of whom I, I tend not to watch because of reasons. I just. I can only take so much farm sim in a day, and, 
Oh, the tanks full. I thought I'd be like halfway around ahead and before the tank filled. Okay, so let's hop into New Holland. Now, if you're wondering how I'm able to just find it straight away, um, if you use drive control, uh, you can use control tab and it'll bring you to the next vehicle that's activated, which is why I've not turned off the New Holland. So we've got... We've got essentially 16 hours on this thing by now. Um, just looking at our counter. 15.8 hours. Which is rather impressive. Um, we'll probably get another 15 in before we harvest again. Because we do have to... I'm tempted to uh, plow the fields again, but I don't know. I'll definitely be using this thing to cultivate, because this is the only tractor I have with enough power to cultivate, and to pull the cultivator at a reasonable speed. Um, I believe this is the only tractor I have that can pull the cedar as well, and if I do end up getting the field that I want, which is... what number field is it? Field 8. Uh, it's only about 50,000 euro, which is around the price point that I'm looking at for field right now. And in fact, this is too full for me to not go and empty it, isn't it? Yes. So let's empty out the New Holland, and then we'll call it a video. Um, the field I want is field 8, because it's 50,000, that's the price point I'm kind of, I'm looking at that price point for a field right now. And, um, if I can get that, get it, it does mean that I will have to, to plow it and then cultivate it and get it all ready. And that'll be at the, at pretty much the expense of the two fields I already have, because I want the three of them to, to be mostly in sync. Um... And I've just realized I've parked the... Nope. I've left the canola bay open, I can see it there. But I can use the other two tractors as a guide, oddly enough. So reverse in here, just dump. Canola will empty out of the trailer and into the canola bay. And as a matter of fact, I have honestly no idea if I've put the fill plane in there or if the fill plane was always <laughs> in there. Um, I can't remember from when I edited the map. I think I might have put the fill planes in, so they might be a bit wonky. Um, in any case, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow with wonky noise because webcam. Woo. Well done me for being an idiot. Uh, and I'll be back again on Thursday with something. <laughs> I don't quite know what I'm going to do for that video. Um, until then, stay safe and goodbye.